Greetings, I'm John the Spirit, I'm not going to set anything on fire today, and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. I have almost everything ready for the oil drilling rig. All I need left is the oil drilling rig multi-block controller, which requires a screen from Extra Utilities. But to get that, although most of these are simple, we also need a resonator from Extra Utilities. To power Extra Utilities machines, you need something called grid power. Grid power is a wireless power where you hook different sources of power, which are always passive, up to the network, and then anything on the network will start using that power. For example, I've made eight solar panels, which are a lot easier than the resonator itself, or, or the stone burnt, and so they're pretty easy, and I'm just going to place them all down across this row of blast furnaces. This now says that I have eight grid power available to me. So that, that number on the right of the grid power button says that there's eight grid power total available. The zero says that I'm using zero of that grid power, and the power generated by one of these solar panels is one. To make stone burn, I need polished stone and 8 grid power. So I'll stick 3 stone into an autoclave to get my polished stone, place down my resonator, pull out my polished stone, and stick it in. Now what happens with the resonator is it gradually uses more power over time until it gets to the mark of 8 power. And once it gets to 8 power, it will create a piece of stone burnt, and then start from the beginning. It's kind of weird, so you can, like, stagger the, your resonators in order to use less power, but it's better to just have enough power production to match power consumption. Another useful thing the resonator will provide us with is red coal, which we'll need for, uh, I believe, for black steel dust later on, which will be useful for several things. So at some point, I'm just going to create a large stockpile of it using the resonator. For that, we need 16 grid points. So I've created a bunch of extra stone birds that eventually I can make water mills, um, which, with which I can make up to 64 um, grid points. Behold, a screen, and then I should be able to use this to make my... Oh, I just need the three circuits. Luckily, I used 64 electronic processors recently to make 16 electronic processor arrays. Pretty cool. And here we go. The multi-black pattern system isn't amazingly understandable, so I'm going to try and walk you guys through this process. We're going to start with what I'm going to call the main level. We're going to need two layers of steel frames on all the corners. The thing with frames is you can right-click on a frame to build on top of it. So I could even do this and get even more, but I'm not going to do that, of course. Below this layer, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we get the layer. So I'm going to make nine. I'm going to add 9 pipes below this layer. With the power of three ULV machine holes, I'll create the different input and output buses I need. And then the two scaffolding layers require pipes, and then there's, it looks like this one pipe required for the next layer, and I am not sure, I believe it's a steel gearbox casing above that. So we only need to add three more pipes, like one, two, three. Steel machine casings in the corners with steel pipe casings surrounding them. I'll surround this pipe in gearbox casings, and then I'm going to put one UV, ULV input bus, which is where we're going to put the pipes. Uh, this machine will require these pipes on a regular basis, and then I'll surround the rest in these solid steel machine casings. Now we'll put down our oil drilling rig and shift right click to show a, um, I guess it's an in-world preview of what we have to place down. The right of the rig is the fluid output hatch, and the back is the input hatch, and then of course we have our HV energy input here. I've placed the steel pipe casings, and once I put down the gearbox casing, it'll give me another layer of the, the structure to complete. Or will it? I don't understand what's going on. Well, I'm just going to keep building. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six layers of three of these steel case, the steel frames like this. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that worked pretty well. And then 1, 2, 3. And I believe the structure should be... Ah, yes, thank goodness. The structure is complete. Rather than waste any HV wires, I'm just going to hook up this, this CF HV directly to the oil drilling rig. Make sure to shift right click it in the correct direction. And it looks like... Oh, well, I guess I can't access it. But I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure the power's there. I decided to add some lights to it. I meant for them to be like the flashing red and, and yellow lights. I don't know if it really worked. Oh well. Our next project is going to be to fuel the oil drilling rig. Um, in order to make oil, we need to use drilling fluid and the pipe. A pipe will be fairly easy. We just need to craft a small steel pipe, which we get from an extruder, and we're going to alloy smelt the steel. And all this is going to be passive crafted right over here. All right, I got my alloy smelter, extruder, and mechanical crafter. The extruder will have a small pipe shape. 
I need to make some limited item filters. There's a better way to make red alloy that involves the blast furnace, but I need a lot of molten redstone, so what I'm going to do is replace this LV fluid input hatch with an MV fluid input hatch, and it should still work, but I'll now have space for hopefully a lot more. It doesn't say how much, but we'll see. You can improve your redstone comparator output from quartz by using pure nether quartz crystals. Again, one quartz turns into two nether quartz crystals pure. This alloy smelter will take wrought iron and coal dust. And this limited item filter for the mechanical crafter will take one small steel pipe. This is just to limit the amount that I create, because otherwise I'll fill this up with nine stacks of them, and that would be, that'd be pretty bad. I'm going to perform what's called an atrocity and use this diamond furnace again, just inserting iron in order to make wrought iron. Then I'll extract always round robin on the seal, and then I'll filter this extruder shortly. Now we have steel in our advanced extruder, making ourselves a small steel pipes, and I'll also be extracting those. I'll fill up this auto crafter's output with cobblestone, and then make sure it only extracts pipes, and then you know set to extract always active. If you don't want to passive craft these pipes, you don't have to, because a pipe has about 100 uses on average before it gets destroyed. We'll also filter this to insert pipes, and then we should get them. Drilling fluid is a mixture with lubricant and some other stuff, and then lubricant is a mixture from oil and redstone. We'll filter this mixture on redstone and oil. We'll filter this mixture on water and lubricant and on stone dust, which we're not getting a lot of right now, but once we reset our chlorine system, we will, and until then, I'll just bootstrap it with stone dust I get from other stuff. I've kickstarted the process by putting my last stone dust in. I only need five stone dust and only 100 millibuckets of lubricant, and I want to get 5,000 buckets of drilling fluid. With the power of extract always active, we'll fill up our drilling fluid, and then our oil drilling rig will run. And now we've got oil refilling the advanced mixer. It isn't as fast as I thought it was based on this recipe here. I don't really s oh, yeah, I don't really see why, but it's okay. We have a whole number of drilling fluid in here. What, impl what this implies is that it has never been used, um, but this is the first time it's been used after all that oil made. So the oil gets stuck in the lubricant creator first. I'm going to increase its fluid priority, and then I'm going to make it so round robin is not a thing for the oil extractor, because round robin does not allow priority distribution of fluids and items. Recall that previously I set up these fluid pipes that are automatic, that are already going to insert the, the required fluids, so as soon as I just plug in a fluid pipe here, um, they'll work. I've set up four chemical reactors here, which will handle each of the different sulfuric gases. We're going to hydro-desulfurize them by using hydrogen. Our distillation tower is now running slowly, so eventually I'll add HV energy input hatches to make this a little bit better. Four of these fluid filters will be on hydrogen, and those are going to go on all these chemical reactors. Each of them on one of the four sulfuric fluids. We also have our first sulfuric of each type, once we hydrogen-sulfurize these gases, we'll get a type of gas and hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide I want to electrolyze back into the hydrogen it came from, because hydrogen isn't easy to come by. To deal with the excess sulfur that I actually don't currently need in my base, I'm just going to trash it. This fluid heater will be creating steam from water, and this fluid filter will put light fuel and heavy fuel into this mixer to create diesel. I'm going to set this mixture to extract on blue, always active, and then I'm going to partition one of my fluid disks specifically for diesel. This is also going to get a higher priority. All light fuel will be used up, but there's a slight excess of heavy fuel, so heavy excess heavy fuel is going to be, um, I believe, steam cracked. These three chemical reactions will perform my three cracking. Sulfuric gas, uh, or refinery gas, is going to be hydro cracked, and then naphtha and heavy fuel are going to be steam cracked. The heavy fuel for this upper chemical reactor will be in a priority of zero, and I want to make sure that whichever one of these is exporting sulfuric heavy fuel, it's going to have an extract without round robin. I'm going to pull out um, two buckets of hydrogen from my advanced chemical reactor for now, and I'm going to use them to crack my first sulfuric naphtha. Here, naphtha is getting steam cracked, and if I set that to extract always active, the steam cracked naphtha is going to go into a second distillation tower, which will start running. What I want most is the methane, because methane, if you chemical react it with water, will give you an enormous amount of hydrogen. For now, I'm going to throw out my carbon dioxide, but eventually I'm going to electrolyze it into oxygen and carbon. I just need a place to put the carbon, and I haven't set that up yet. I'm fluid filtering this chemical reactor on methane and water. It should fill up with water for now, and then I'll get the methane in later. Woe of woes, I'm going to trash my carbon dioxide for now. 
methane is also going to go into my network. So I'm going to set the extract on blue, and then I'm going to go down here and partition a cell for methane. I was confused for a moment as to why this wasn't working, and then I realized, oh no, this is, an act this is actually an HV recipe. But that's okay, because I have HV power. I just need to set that up. I decided on the way I would just upgrade the input hatches of my distillation towers as well. So here's my, uh, my HVCF. I just need to make the chemical reactor now. All right, I'm making my changes now. HVCF, and I've already put in the input hatches so I can put in these vibrant alloy cables one by one. And then I'll have some space right here for my HV chemical reactor, and then there we go. And now I'm doing what I wanted to do. And now we're starting to hydrogen-sulfurize everything. Now I have all these crazy fluids, and I'm going to show you what to do with them in a moment. But you may recall that I was doing petrochem, so I'd, I'd have a route to epoxy resin. To get epichlorohydrin, which is something used for epoxy resin, you can either use glycerol, which involves some kind of plant or animal oil, but takes a long time, or allyl chloride, which you can get a one-to-one -one ratio from propene. Um, and I've done some calculations to determine how much propene you get from this system. And I've determined that from every 30,000 millibuckets of oil, or every 30 buckets of oil you get from the oil drilling rig, you'll get at least 25 epoxy resin sheets, um, which results in about 25 epoxy resin um, circuit boards, and therefore about 60 micro circuits, um, which is the next type of circuit that we're going to be trying to create. So here's what I'm going to do in terms of storing these fluids. Ethylene is going to get its own disk. Ethane is going to share a disc with propane and butene, all of which I'm going to be cracking and returning into this casing. Benzene and butadiene are going to share a disc as well, because eventually they're going to be used for something called styrene butadiene rubber, and I'll just need them later. Since propane requires chlorine to do its thing, I'm just for safety going to plug it all into a disc as well. And for now, I'm also going to store toluene. I think I'm going to need it at some point to make gel toluene to make TNT, which is used in implosion compressors. Um, and I think it's just going to be, yes, for omnium nuggets and reinforced radium alloys. So I want to keep this toluene for now. Ethylene disc, propene disc, toluene disc, ethane, propane, and butadiene disc. Excuse me, that should be butene, not butadiene. Also note that I'm just cheating these buckets in so I can partition more easily. And then our benzene butadiene. Now we can start extracting on blue, always active. These fluid output hatches automatically output their fluids to enter IO conduits even if they're set to don't to, to, to never active. So you should be able to turn off extract and then switch the channel and then go back to extract. Now I'm going to auto extract my hydro cracked refinery gas so that it starts making more methane because I've run out of hydrogen for all of the for some of some of these processes. This is much faster. It's also creating helium, and I have no idea where the helium is going. It shouldn't be going anywhere, so I'm kind of confused as to what's happening with the helium. Oh, it's just going into this fluid interface. All right, so I'm going to make a, a disk for that. In other pretty bad news, it looks like these output hatches never output the same amount. This, they, they don't always output to the same place, so I'm going to have to take these fluids that I'm creating and throw them also into um, this system just as, as a buffer. So I'm going to have one for methane if I don't already have one. It's, it's hard to tell. And then I'm going to add one for hydrogen as well. And also for heavy and light fuel, they'll have their own disk. I'm also setting up a helium disk. And just like that, the helium in here disappeared. And now that I've set this to extract, the hydrogen will disappear, resulting in more hydro crack refinery gas. So hopefully in the end, we'll get a huge bonus in hydrogen. Now why, Spirit, do you ask, do you want all this hydrogen? Well, another great thing can be used for, if I don't go space exploring, which I really don't want to do, um, is deuterium. And deuterium, um, among many other things, can get me a microversium in the blast furnace. And microversium is what we're going to be using to create microverse projector casing so that we can start using micro miners, which I'm very excited about. We're currently creating so much hydrocrack refinery gas that I don't think my distillery can keep up with all of these things it needs to crack. But I think it's going to be fine. Eventually this should peter out. If not, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I might just make another distillation tower. I find that unlikely. I'm hoping that this settles down eventually. We'll see. We are, in fact, at a great net loss of refinery gas. So hopefully, hopefully, I'll get to use the steam crack naphtha soon. 
I'm also going to have the hydrogen from this advanced chemical reactor extracting on blue, just so I have it going somewhere where it should go, and we'll just see if it continues to fit. But the binds are filling up fairly slowly for having, it looks like we have 320 buckets, and we've only used up about 50 bytes so far. And then to get the hydrogen going everywhere, I'm going to filter it in this fluid interface, so we start using it. Unfortunate problem, carbon dioxide is now going into this fluid interface because we're not extracting on brown like I used to be doing. So, to fix that, we're just going to filter this fluid storage bunch for trash on carbon dioxide as soon as I can get it from JEI, and then, boom, it should trash itself, and perfect. I think carbon dioxide would help supplement my oxygen production a little bit, um, so I don't know if it's going to be at any particular speed, though. One other thing to note, if this output bus fills up, you are in for a bad time. I'll probably just trash these at some point, but people keep saying I'm going to need carbon, and I'm not sure for what yet, but as soon as I find out, I'll let you guys know. Anyway, I know this has been a very sporadic episode, but I think we're just about finished with the content I have. In the next episode, we will be hopefully creating epoxy resin, which I'm very excited to do, and that's going to get us the next... Um, item we need the epoxy sheets, which will get us in a chemical reactor epoxy circuit board, so we can get the the final tier two circuits, which will be surprisingly easy. And then, and then, with the power of all those circuits, we'll be able to create and automate the steel plated micro miner, our first micro miner. Um, although we'll have to use rocket fuel as well. Anyway, but that'll get us lots of useful ores that I'm going to use for so many things. It's going to be great. I'm pro I mean, salt, for example, will automatically be great. And then Galena is going to prepare us for um, in gap. And then Rutile will be able to get titanium. Ah, it's going to be wonderful. So many things. In any case, I am nothing but excited. We have whole new avenues opening up to us with the power of, the mild power of Petrochem. But yeah, as always, if you have any feedback, I would love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.